Today, I'm building a coffee table. Let's get started. I started with two bookmatch slabs of walnut. They're just over two inches thick and have a little bit of a cup. My first task was to get these flat. To do that, I'm using a router sled. I started by hot gluing in some shims to level out the slab. This also prevents the slab from moving during the flattening process. I set my router bit to just below the point that it hits the slab at its lowest point. I used the sled to move the router across the slab, being careful not to move the router too quickly. This is a pretty long process, so just be patient and move slowly across the slab. It's important to note that your router bit depth should be no more than a quarter inch. With one side done, I could pop off the shims and flip the slab over. I set the depth again, setting the router bit just to where it touched the slab. This is a pretty messy process, so I recommend doing this outdoors if you can. If not, just be prepared to do a bit of cleanup. With the first slab done, I was ready to move on to slab number two. The process for the second slab is the same as the first. On the second slab, however, make sure that your cut depth is exactly what it was on the first. With both slabs flat, I could begin the cleanup process. Next, I could move on to ripping my board straight. A track saw works great for this process. If you don't have a track saw, you could use a circular saw and a straight edge. I use the off cut from my first cut to match up the grain for the book match pieces. These slabs are much too big for my planer, so I'm using a drum sander to get them flat. You could also use a belt sander for this process. I sanded both slabs down to an inch and 5 eighths in thickness. With the open-ended drum sander, I could sand both edges flat flipping them in between to make sure they were the same thickness. 
With the slabs at their final thickness, I brought them over to my jointer and put a clean edge on them. This isn't completely necessary, but I just wanted to make sure that the edge was as flat and straight as possible. I next laid out the location for my dominoes. I'm using the 40mm dominoes here. This is the largest that I can do with the 500. The dominoes help make sure that the jointed faces stay flat during the glue up. Being that this is such a big piece, I wanted as much time as I could have with glue up, so I'm using tight bond extend. I find that using a brayer works really well to help spread the glue for these big glue ups. Leave a comment and let me know what your favorite glue up items are. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It really does help. With the glue dried, I flipped the piece over so that I could apply tack tape to the bottom. This will prevent any epoxy from leaking through the cracks in the wood. I'm using total vote 5 to 1 epoxy. I like this because the slow hardener allows me plenty of open time. And for the black, I'm using trans tent dye. I try not to go overboard with the epoxy only using it to fill cracks and stabilize some of the softer places of the wood. I make sure to mix enough epoxy to go back over the places where the wood wants to soak in a lot of the epoxy. Finally, I hit the epoxy with a blowtorch to remove any of the air bubbles. I let the epoxy cure for about 5 days. Then I remove the tack tape and scrape it out of any places where it might have stuck to the epoxy. If you're enjoying this content, please subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Next, I fill any remaining holes or cracks with Starbond CA glue. These are on the bottom of the piece, so odds are no one will ever see them. With the bottom sanded to 150 grit, I move on to the top. I'm using 80 grit to remove the bulk of the epoxy. 
Good mask and dust collection is really important for this step. Next, I sand the top to 150 grit. This ensures me a smooth surface for routing. I use a circle cutting jig and enough cut bit to cut the circle. I'll make multiple passes at a quarter inch depth of cut, increasing my cut depth with each circle. get to about a quarter inch of material remaining, I drill a pilot hole for my jigsaw. I then cut away the remaining material with the jigsaw, being sure to stay away from the inner diameter. switch to a flush trim bit on my router and cut away the remaining material. Next, I flip the piece over and cut in a 45 degree chamfer around the bottom. Back at the top edge, I route in an eighth inch round over. Sand everything down one more time to 180 grit. I then water pop the grain and then sanded everything down to 180 grit. Mineral spirits are then used to clean all surfaces. I'm finishing this piece in Rubio Monocoat. It's a nice and easy to use hard wax oil. This is a great finish and it's extremely durable. To apply, I pour the finish on and then use a spreader to work it around the piece. I've included the tools and items I've used in this build in the links below if you want to check those out. I use a buffing pad to work in the finish and remove any excess. I use a Scotch-Brite pad to apply the finish to the edges and the contours. Finally, it was time to apply my mark. I'm attaching the base using threaded inserts. 
So I placed the base in the center of the table and drilled in some pilot holes. I use a bolt and some washers to insert the threaded inserts. I find this to be the easiest way to get them installed. With the base securely attached to the center of the table, I could finish putting in the hardware. This table turned out absolutely gorgeous. The figure in the walnut is stunning. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I'll see you next time.